This is my Socratic seminar for Lord of the Flies in English class. Um, I'd like to start with my first question. Um, what does hunting mean to Jack at the beginning and then later? What happens to his mental state after he kills his first pig? Um, in the first part of the book, we can already see that he wants his boys to become a hunter. Which proves that he's already kind of in the mentality to do something that isn't kind of right or fit for natural uh, civilization, so to speak. <clears throat> he, he tries to initiate to become the, um, the chief, first of all, with the conch. And I feel as if, if he were to get the conch, I feel like he would just make everybody or some type of hunter or something of the sort. I don't think he'd be a very good chief for that um, simple reason. Now, it's not it's not bad to say I don't think he could be a good chief. I think it's just the truth that he would not be a good chief because of what he would do to the other boys and uh, stuff like that. So, I really feel like that is the case. Um, my, my other question is talk about the differences between the two main um, like characters which is Ralph and Jack and uh, so some some differences between them is obviously in the first part of the book and in the later parts in chapter 6 chapter 7 and chapter 8 you can later see that Ralph is struggling to contain himself and stay with that mentality of you know um, being civilized and structured um, as the conch represents um, while Jack decides to go bloodthirsty in a sense and start hunting pigs and be more um, aggressive with all of the boys inside of the um, in, in the island um, I feel like this sets them apart like um, a lot because Ralph he already doesn't want that type of business and he doesn't want to go with that type of view and the fact that he doesn't want to go with that type of view already explains like a like this is what they are this is the guy that's like very structured understands what he's saying wants what he wants and he's trying to guide everybody else so they understand that and they can get away from there quicker quicker because in the, the first part of the book you can tell he's a little childish at first because he realizes that oh yo we're on an island we're alone we can do whatever we want I feel as if a lot of people would do that, would be a little childish, you know, stuff like that. And then later on in the book, he starts to get a little more serious, you know, we have to get off of this island, we have to do something about the resources, stuff like that. And that's understandable because, you know, he's been on it for a while now, he understands what he has to do. And Jack, on the other hand, I don't think he's really cared at all, he just kind of wants to hunt he just wants to hunt people that's all not even people just the, the animals he just wants to hunt pigs and so even later on we see him um murder simon because uh, well everyone murders simon because of the little um engaging act that they have um after that after that question i feel um in what way can piggy with his specs be seen as um, a scientific or intelligent ways uh, of society. Um, in the first part of the book, they're already using the specs to start the fire, which is a way to get off the island. I feel like that that already represents that you know other people are taking this intelligence or this I these ideas from others to start something of their own they're stealing ideas to me that's why i feel it like it is they're stealing ideas from another person and using it to their own benefit and i feel like that's what it means when all the boys jump piggy and take his specs later on we see the specs um one glass or something uh gets broken piggy is um he's struggling to see but that's besides the point. That's not really what we're focusing on. The whole point is that half of it is gone. Half of that intelligence and that spectrum of it is gone. It's no longer there. You've lost most of what you thought was, you know, intelligent. Most of that intelligence that was there is gone now because it's it's been broken. Some of it is gone. You can't get it back. It's shattered. That's what it is. 
some of that intelligence just is impossible to get back and that's what it is you can't do anything about that um to me i i think it i think it means a lot a big ordeal and then afterwards later we see um ralph take piggy's glasses but he immediately gives them back when he's done and he reassures him that he's going to do so I feel like this is no longer, this is like a civilized way of doing it. It shows Ralph's um, civilized way of handling the situation, not stealing it like the other boys and him did last time. Because, you know, he's grown um, much much better when it comes to their um, relationship. I feel like that means a big ordeal, uh, or means a lot to Piggy and whatnot. What role does Dekanj play? Um, uh, Dekanj represents civilization really it represents order peace everything like that it, re it represents that in a different in a different way honestly it's in a different spectrum from what others think and i understand that because the truth of the matter is that once you think about the conch and the whole idea of it it start you know it starts to pop up in your head a little bit more oh they're you know, people are stealing the conch. They're taking it now. Oh, I have the conch. I have the conch. You cannot speak. You know, they're kind of just taking that and they're kind of running with it, honestly. They're just making a big um, deal out of it, really. I understand that you have to stick to civilization. That's exactly what Ralph wants, while Jack is um, testifying against that in a certain degree. But they really, they really are going um, for that conch. And they, um, Honestly, it just they're they're ruining a lot of what their um the the conch means because they're just they're treating it as just an object when it's really it, it just it really is a symbol. It means a lot more than that. It's not just an object. It's something. It, re it represents them, the order, everything they've known, everything they've lived with. It represents that, not just an object. Um what does the beast represent and how does Jack use it um are there um parallels for beasts in the real world other than fiction um we can already see that that is the case um the beast is inside of the boys of course nobody knows that except for simon later on in the book when he's talking to the lord of the flies so already they see oh the beast is there and l the way Jack uses it later on is actually to separate himself and make his own group, which eventually leads to the death of Simon when Ralph Pe and Peggy go over there to investigate. That will lead to the death of Simon because, you know, they're chanting, dancing around, doing all their um, dumb stuff. Um, but you you can see that, first of all, with the beast, the, the, the way it's used by Jack is actually... Um, it's actually used pretty intelligently if you wanted to, to separate off and do your own thing, because you can you can see first of all he already made want like he already makes a choice. Oh, I'm going to sabotage how Ralph looks as much as possible, and that is exactly what he does in the best way possible. What he does is actually kind of kind of intelligent, really. Um, he just kind of says, "Yo." Ralph ran away. He he was doing all of this. He's you know, and he says, "No, I have the conch. You cannot speak." Then he doesn't have a chance at fighting back for what he's saying whatsoever. Eventually, it does backfire on him because the boys do not want to join him. But the only thing is, they don't want to join him because they don't want to look like that in front of Frank. I mean, not Frank. Ralph, right? Ralph, obviously. He's a better leader, in my opinion. I think he's a better leader. Um, Jack is obviously not stable, but um, every all the other kids they don't want to stand up exactly because what they fear might happen, and that's understandable. I say. Um, eventually, they do go to Jack, and the beast. They find out that the beast is inside of them, but they don't listen. They only kill Simon. Um, and to me, I think there is a, a really a real world beast. Um, in the real world, we have to think about um, government issues, societal structures, you know, all of this um, oppression in certain ways, you know, 
racial like integrity stuff like that all of this stuff it uh, it's honestly in the real world you could say that that's the beast because really we're just fighting ourselves over and over again daily so like a society is just a bunch of fighting now it's just you are always going against someone in the real world and that is kind of the beast it's just you, there's nothing you can do about it. it that is the beast in my opinion um what does simon mean when he suggests that the beast is only in the boys themselves um i it's as um the author says you know men produce evil like we do honey um i think that eventually they're just going to think of ways that they can harm the other boys or do something of the sort to um you know harm them you know just do anything they can really and you can already see that in the first part of the book when one of the kids is throwing rocks at um a little kid in the pond they're seeing how close they can get and it's kind of like why are you throwing rocks at a child you know that's i'm pretty sure that's not normal you know um i feel like they just are the beast they are the beast they're evil they're going to do something and you can even see that it's proven after when simon comes closer and they literally murder him i mean it's it's just it's proven it's just how it is they just they do that you know um why do the little ones choose to follow jack and the hunters rather than ralph to me um i don't i don't think it's because they feel safer or um that they feel like jack can protect them uh i feel like they just feel they just must feel satisfied with the fact that they can become hunters too you know they have a purpose whereas with ralph their purpose is little to none and it, it's just not really there they don't really have much to do all they really do um sam and eric at least they watch over the fire that is it i mean we don't really see any other little ones doing really much at all except for swimming in a pond and messing around while piggy watches them so in my opinion i think um they just felt as if they might have a purpose or something to do with um jack and they feel you know it, it like it as a kid your your mind is kind of twisted in a sense it's different you know you're not thinking the same way any grown or normal person would pick ralph as their leader because they're smart intelligent they can find their way through things they're they have vigor you know whereas um jack on the other hand is kind of mentally unstable he's not okay i don't think he can plan very well and i don't think he really knows what he's doing with himself which to me means that you know he's a bad leader don't go with him he just he's kind of you know, crazy so like but as a kid you'd be like yo he's slaughtering pigs that's cool i want to join him yeah I can understand that. That's probably why they joined him first. Uh, understandable, you know? That's probably why they joined him when he split off from Ralph's group. Um, what do you feel Golding's vision of humanity is? Do you think we are born for peace and cooperation or for dominance and savagery? Um, I feel like what he's trying to show in this book is um, obviously that we are evil you know our instinct is dominance and savagery it's actually it's just that's just how humans work we're not i feel like you know as any other person would people want to you know people want to do certain things to get the advantage over others because they want to be better obviously people want to be better societal structures always tell you you know be better than that person you know some you know people will always sell products and they'll say yo you do you use this you'll become better than that person and to me i feel like you know that's instilled that instinct of become better you know if you have to down like if you have to um be more dominant over them do it if you have to be um a little savage with what you're doing do it go for it because you need to you need to be ahead you need to be better you need to survive that's what i think it means that's why i feel like i feel like that's what he's thinking do i think that that aligns with my um with my wording and how i believe of things yes i i definitely believe that a lot i i definitely believe that we're kind of evil what do you think about the rules of civilization? Do they free us and enable us to rise to our best selves, or do the rules constrain our bad nature that lie at the heart of ourselves? Honestly, it, it 
it gets it restricts everything if we it restricts a lot of what um we must we, we can or cannot do but i also feel as if that's not a good thing either it's not very good to just push out the fact that we are really just kind of evil you know we're like i feel like we we have to get some output for it some way to deal with it but you know societies hold it in don't deal with it calm down work get money die that's all it is really that's really all it is life has its own meaning and you can think what are you you know life's meaning is different for everybody because something is different and special to every other different person so i understand that but i do think that it constrains our bad nature what does hunting mean yeah i already said that okay we're good um golding wrote his novel 10 years after the close of world war ii and the area of communists in what way does his book reflect the particular world politics of his time does the book have relevance today the book definitely has relevance today i can say that this book really is just a lot of stuff honestly it's a lot of stuff to take in but if you're able to think about it on a way where you can just focus and understand what's really happening in the book and what it means in the real life circumstances you can definitely tell that you know this is very um this is very true it's relevant it comes to us and we can understand that and world after world war ii that's also understandable because evil acts were done I mean, Jews were just getting destroyed. They were getting demolished just because, you know. Uh, of course, I don't know much about World War II, so I, I cannot say anything on that. Because I could, I could get facts wrong, and that's not what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to say what I have to say about the book and what I think about it. So, honestly feel as if it was made for a reason. It must have connected with, you know, World War II and stuff like that. It was made for, you know, that certain reason. This is all made to, like, connect and stuff, you know? It's just a lot of the book's structures can relate to the real world. And, you know, it's it's very apparent within the book's um, words and whatnot. The last connection um, I have to make with the book and the real world is um, probably with, with movies and the way society does things. Um just movies and stuff like that if you really think about it movies can really portray um evil nature within humans and whatnot just as the book does sure the book does it in a more meaningful way and and really shows what that evil is like in a different um you know way in a different way of showing it but i do feel like movies also um can display that sort of feeling within um stuff like that and a lot of movies you can can feel and see yo like wow you know this is this is a lot of stuff this is this is a lot you know this is really just so much and you know it's on un it's understandable really it's just wow like humans can be really e like evil you know like um people can just be horrible and it's just that's how that's how humanity is sort of it just we understand there's a lot of um stuff that's been going on recently with um crimes and stuff and like you can see like what's happening why is why is this happening and i feel like it's just because you know people are evil people people are just are evil and some of them just can't deal with it some of them you know make um horrible decisions and acts to do things that shouldn't be done so i feel as if that's a that's a big reason as to um another the, one of the connections so i i've already finished my two connections and um 10 questions but um i wanted to give my overview or review on the book or the parts i've read so far because i still haven't finished it but i have to say so far within the book it's it's really meaningful there's a lot to understand and there's a lot to, to i don't know it's just it's hard to explain because there's so much going on and there's just everything that's described within the book is meaningful from the spelling to the to the environment i mean even when they're going to investigate the beast it's all they're going through you know 
the ashes and stuff like that. They're going through everything they've really destroyed just to get to something that is them. Because the beast is really them. Even in in the um in a real circumstance you can see, oh it, you know, it's the dead parachutist, you know. That's not them. Whatever. But they're going through everything that they've destroyed, a kid that they've killed, just to just to see that the beast is really just themselves and they flee from it. They run and they go tell everyone. And then Simon goes and eventually tells them and gets murdered. Um that's besides the point. I think I think the book has a a lot of meaning. It just you can see from even the base standards, wh whether it's pointed out to you or not, you can see that there's a lot of meaning. From like the, the it's just little ones, little ones, little ones. It's just a lot of stuff changes throughout the book. And you can easily see that. You can really see how stuff changes because of um, the environment and the way it, you know the author explains it like when they're going when they're going to kill simon at first it's it's fine it's you know like it's sunny outside you know it's fine and then when we're introduced to peggy and ralph we can already see that it's um it's it's very dark it's gloomy it's raining they can't really see what's happening and once they go to the feast they go to the party they can chill there with jack and and all the others for a little bit and they it's still dark it's gloomy it is what it is you know simon comes out from having a seizure he's on the f he's on the floor i'm pretty sure he's crawling he's stumbling you know and that's because he just had a seizure you know he just controlled himself after having a seizure so afterwards they all think oh yo that's the beast kill it they can't see it's dark it's raining it's loud you know they can't tell it's an actual person although i don't know how you wouldn't be able to tell because you should be able to see the silhouette and stuff but you know I, I'm not them. I wasn't in their situation, so I would not know. But, um... You can already see how the environment changes a lot. Um... At the beginning of the book, I think it's... I think it's sunny. Um... You know, because they're planning to have a good time. That's what it is. They're planning to have a good time. Later on, they even kill a kid because of, you know... Burning the forest on accident. And... Them, that right there then everyone is all quiet they realize what they've done they're like oh that kid is dead of course the little ones don't know because um the little ones don't really know later on in the story they just kind of forget about it really they just don't really care they don't focus on that they don't really ask questions about it they really just move on but that kid's distinctive markings are um are what sets him out the mulberry mark on his face it's what sets him out from everyone else and you can really see how that um changes everything um i think that's it i think that should be it for my solo socratic seminar on the lord of the flies um i hope i get an a I probably won't, that's fine though. Uh, hope you like the gameplay in the background though, kind of fire, right? No? Alright, cool, that's fine. Um, I'm kind of talking to try and fill the, uh, the last uh, two minutes of the, the gameplay up. Um, you might want me to end it, but like, um, you know. No, thank you. Um, Uh, this is this is baby Yoda, but grown up. He's uh using his using his glow stick to beat people. That that's that that that's a carpet. He's um he's shooting Nerf darts out of his Nerf gun. Um, but they have glow sticks attached. Um, I'm uh this is real bad. Um, how how's your day? It was good. It was good. It was good. It was a good day. Okay. Uh, 
So, so this is the end of the gameplay. Um, you know, I, I didn't have an emo. I'm too broke to afford one. So uh, it's okay. It's okay. Um, that's the end. Um, uh, yeah, I won. I won. Um. The yeah, um, he got him first. Uh, bye.